Hey guys, and welcome to my next reaction to Moon Knight. So, I am so excited for this episode because obviously the last episode ended all kinds of, I mean, I don't even know what happened, but I, I would love to know is like, you know, is Mark or Steven dead? Uh, are, is this the afterlife? Is it just magical water? Is, it, what is going on and why is there, why is there a, a, a lovely hippo lady? She seems lovely. I mean, I know we've only seen her say like, hi, but lovely hippo lady. I'd like to, I'd like to, to know more. So let's get into it. This is all your fault. Oh, oh, okay. Mark, I didn't shoot you. Your mind <gasps> is violently vacillating between sense and nonsense and a reassuring fantasy that you've created on your own. Rhinoceros and... Hippopotamus. You're right, I'm s you're right, it, it was a hippopotamus. Mm -hmm. And it was, but it Get fell. it right. Do you think that is sense or nonsense? Sense. Fuck you. Nonsense? No, sweetie, no, no, no. That's really encouraging. You were talking to me about a boy. Do you remember that boy? You think you could tell me about that little boy? Oh shit! Are we deep diving this episode? I'm not. I'm not prepared for this. Fuck. Okay. Thank you. I feel. I want to see myself up. Thank you. Stop the hell out of that! You're gonna lose your job. No, and listen, Mark. Yo, 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 the needle, the needle. Oh man. Oh gosh, this will really bake your noodle. But I think you were just taking a little time out. I'm afraid you're actually quite dead. I'm sorry, what? This will really bake your noodle? Welcome, gentle travel uh, travelers, to the realm of the Jewelt. Jewelt! Yes. Like the ancestral plague. Oh, just gorgeous. Uh, anyway, I do actually. Uh. Why would we imagine this realm to be a psychiatric hospital? Because we're insane. <sighs> oh. Mark. That's the reality. Mark. This Mark. Is the hospital. That's the imagination. We're sending to Arlund uh, to feel the breeze, right, Tom Eddie? Oh, so he's the smart one, eh? Hey? That! If your heart's great, Mr. Knife. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, oh! oh. It was little old me worrying I'd blow your chest wide open. That was a risk. That was a risk. That we're just gonna. She's weighing our hearts. Brush. The scales of justice and the feathers. Pass them. Okay. So the ancient Egyptians All right. believed in the heart. Well, if you don't balance. Get thrown overboard. Whee! Woo! Okay, we'll drag you down into the duet. Kill my hippo, steal the ball. Kill. Kill. Um, fellas. Mark! You're a little wobbly. What's it moving? Uh, I don't know. This boat contains all of Elias' memories. Now, I don't know what you two guys have been hiding. Oh, no. My advice get in there and show each other the truth. No, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, like, I want to know, but I don't want to know. You know what I mean? Not sure. I don't. Okay. Is it, is all right. I'm just saying there's one hippo and two of us, and this ship can't be that hard to steer. So, and we don't have to actually, you know, like the walk. Wow, well, Mark. Oh, he we wants to fight his way out of all we'll situations. Do you remember this? Yeah. I mean. Oh God. Oh God. Yeah. What is? Uh, okay. There's the. <gasps> Creepy calf filled with dead bodies. Oh my god. Oh god. All of them? Mark, why is there a child in a room filled with people that you've killed? Oh shit. Oh, Mark. Oh, this is gonna be tough. I know. Come on, now let's get it. Oh no. What happened? What do you do? Keep an eye on your brother, okay? 
Shit, what happens? What happens? What happens? Mom said not to when it's raining. It'll be fine. Look at your baby. Oh no. Boys! Don't go any further! Stephen, let's go. Fuck. This is all your fault! Stephen, Stephen, come here. We're just about to blow out the candles now. Your mother's not feeling well, Mark. Well, uh, we'll do it just you and I this year. Okay? This is horrible. Okay. Stephen! always jealous of him. <laughs> Ever since he was born. I sh should have known you would do something like this. Okay. Right. Shit. Why are you remembering her like that? It's not what she was like. She will get help. And we will fix this. You're supposed to fix this. I mean... Why haven't you? It's enough secret. Killed hostages. And you believe that? <laughs> Wouldn't put it past you. Oh, Stephen. <laughs> Danger is near. Stephen Grant has no fear. 
Oh my god! Fuck! You're gonna learn to listen. Let's see what she did. Let's see what she did. Let's see what she did. You're not meant to see that. You're not meant to see that. That's the whole point of you. Oh, shit. You've got to live a happy, simple, normal life. Well, you want to remember the truth? That you had a mother that beat you? That hated you? That, that made your life a living hell? That she's still alive? She's not. I speak to her every day. What are you talking about? Let me out, 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 let me out. Oh! My brother's here? After your mother passed. Oi, don't say that. That's not true. That's not true. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I must. You having a laugh as well? Thank you. No, please don't do that. It's very me. Don't pull over, please. Would you like to speak to your mother? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, dead. Okay, I need to keep this together. I need to keep it together. Shit. Oh. Okay. He was just a child. It wasn't your fault. Okay. 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 Are the scales balanced now? Because I don't think I can take much more of this. Your scales never balanced. Our journeys come to an end. I cannot stop the inevitable. What the fuck? Is it not balanced because there's a third? What's that? What's that? What's that? I've got this too. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Beautiful.
I mean this when I say that that was probably one of my favorite things that I've watched that Marvel's put out. And we all know Marvel's put out a lot of stuff. Oh my God. I understand that, you know, in some regards, it didn't really move the plot forward, but I, I was absolutely okay with that because it was a lot of things that I wanted to be answered about Mark and Steven and everything that has happened, why Steven exists. There's just so much that they covered that just, <laughs> I'm blown away by this episode. I'm blown away by the way that they were able to um, visualize having to go back into memories and clearly by even the idea that Mark created Stephen going back into these memories is, you know, something that uh, he doesn't want to do. He created Stephen to cope with very severe trauma. Okay. Oh my God. I, okay. Where? Where do I even begin? I'm not, I, I, I'm not kidding. It's just, I am so floored by this episode. This was beautiful. I keep looking, by the way, I'm just making sure there's not a post credit scene. I just muted it. <laughs> so, I don't want to, um, I think it's good though. Um, anyway, it just, it truly was remarkable. I didn't mean that to be a pun, but it was, it was remarkable. Okay. All right. You know, I can try to lead a serious discussion about stuff and then, and then here I go thinking it's hilarious that I said it was remarkable. Okay. But it really, I loved getting this context and obviously it kind of seemed fairly early on in this episode that we're going to deep dive into the past. I, you know, it was interesting because, well, I don't, I don't know that I made a ton of assumptions. Um, about, I thought, I did think that Mark was probably the main and Stephen was the altar. Uh, but I, I didn't really have a ton of assumptions of when Stephen came about. And I guess in some regards, I thought the only thing I could think was maybe Stephen came about when he was like dying and Khonshu showed up and, um, and all of that stuff. I didn't necessarily think that Stephen would have appeared before that, which makes sense why, you know, Stephen is so sure um, because Stephen remembered, you know, parts of his childhood as as well. You know what I mean? Uh, I think, well, me, meaning, I think um, it made sense why Stephen was was sure that that he was the main. You know, because I was like, if if he really only has memories going back to you know a few months ago or however long, you know, or um, it, it it seemed a little odd. Um, and you know, that, that could have also just been, you know, chalked up to somebody not wanting to accept the truth and, and stuff like that. Um, but it was very interesting to hear that, that Stephen was created such a long time ago in order to cope with abuse and cope with feeling alone and to cope with Mark feeling guilt, Mark 
dealing with the fact that he's a bad guy. Um, particularly when you're a child, I feel like that's when you're kind of, you know, you're learning about the world, your brain is developing all of this stuff. And if somebody, your mom, tells you that you're, you are at fault for this accident, this horrific accident, um, and tells you, and, and basically proves to you over and over again that you need to be punished for this. And not only that, because that's horrific, but the fact that I, I feel like the dad knew about it and didn't stop it. The dad didn't go, no. Like, leave Mark alone. I don't think they're, that's assumptions, I guess, from what we've seen, but it, that breaks my heart. And what it has to do to you mentally, especially as a child, to, you know, be so certain that you are the reason that your brother died that you deserve to be punished for it and even even if your father is standing by you know I know that there's I can't I, I can't have a ton of sympathy for the mom on a, on a base level, I guess we, we should have sympathy for her for losing a child. Um, and that outburst at the funeral or the, the, at, the, at, the, at the house when it was immediately after her son died and her saying this is all your fault and screaming with the tears in her eyes and stuff like that. I mean, there is a part of you that can probably be like, you know, everybody, everybody grieves and that's, that's horrific and you shouldn't do that. But you also, when you are grieving and dealing with that traumatic of a loss, it, you cannot always see straight and or do the right thing. That is absolutely true. But I think uh, past that point, uh, the sympathy goes right out the window. Um, even that's hard to, hard to take in her yelling at her, her, her kid like that but but uh, you know I think af you know absolutely horrific you know her saying that you were always jealous you were always I mean what is going on I, I, I mean it's just that's that's horrific it's so horrific and um you know I don't know a ton about DID um, or anything like that. So, you know, I'm not the most qualified person to talk about this or whatever, but it does make sense that s your mind to cope with severe trauma, hurt, guilt. I, I've said this so many times in, on my channel, but like guilt is one of the worst things to overcome. And it makes sense that Mark's mind would create a, a, not just a person, I mean, a, a, a personality that can be happy. I think that's, that's kind of the initial thing that we, we can see is that, you know, he said to Stephen, he said, he said, you, you got, you got to live a life where your mom's still alive, where you're happy, where you don't have to think about all of the things that happened, all of the abuse that happened, all of the guilt that you feel, you know, um, you can, can lead that happy life. And give maybe Mark some sort of peace of mind, even if it's brief, whenever Stephen shows up, or, you know, he can, he can live a life and um, you know, have interests. And, um, I mean, not only that, but a way to 
be good. What I mean by that is, you know, I think Mark definitely has a, a huge complex about things that he's he's done uh, as Moon Knight, as, you know, the guilt from his childhood, so many different things. And I think on some level creating Steven helps him be a good person. Even if it's only that part of him, he, he can be a good person, you know? And it, it just, it breaks my heart. And uh, I was, I was getting close to tears throughout the entire, I mean, I was sucked into this episode. And I was getting close to tears through a good portion of this episode. And I thought I was holding on pretty strong. I was doing good. I was like, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. I mean, it was heavy. You know, everything was really heavy. And you could kind of tell by the beginning of the episode that it was going to get heavy. It was going to continue to be this way. And uh, just seeing... <laughs> Steven tell Mark that it's not his fault, that he was a kid, that he can't... You know, there's got to be t just this this feeling that Mark has that it is his fault. Even, I mean, let's even disregard, which we shouldn't, but to, to my point, disregard the fact that his mom continuously said it was his fault. So that's ingrained in him, right? But, you know, I mean, we've all, maybe not all, but I, I feel like we can all relate to to doing something without thinking or whatever, and then there was negative consequences. Maybe you hurt somebody's feelings without realizing it. You, you know, you know what I mean? Like, and then you, you, you know, beat yourself up. And that can be something so minor. It could literally be you, you said something and you just hurt somebody's feelings that you absolutely did not intend to, but you did. And so, I mean, I know that I've gone through that. Um, which is obviously not to the scale of this, but I know that I've gone through stuff like that where I'm just like, oh my God, I cannot believe I either said that or, but you know, whatever it is. And then I beat myself up over it. Like, why did I do that? Oh my God. Oh my God. And the thing is, is that you can't turn back time. You can't, you can't change that. So there is, I think, always going to be a part of Mark, even without the constant reminder from his bitch ass mom, we shall refer to her um but uh th 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 without that constant reminder that he you know is uh he made a mistake he pushed them to go when you know i i believe the little brother said that let's turn back we shouldn't go in the rain or whatever and and that led it, it was absolutely an accident he was a kid and mistakes are made and sometimes mistakes have terrible consequences and that is a very tough thing to get over and try to um get past when it comes to the guilt so seeing steven sort of talk to mark and say hey you know you were a kid this was a mistake it was a horrible mistake but it was you know an accident. And, you know, I was losing that, but there is this, this beautiful thing happening throughout this whole episode that had to deal with Stephen learning about what Mark's been through, about what they've both been through, right? They are the same person. But, uh, and going through all of this stuff, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing him realize what's happened, why he was made, why he was, you know, um, and not only are we seeing that, you know, S Stephen getting the truth, 
we're also seeing Mark confront the truth of what happened, but the also I believe the truth about Stephen. I but he he always knew it. I think. I think he always knew it. And it was very interesting, really quick interjection when, you know, he said earlier episodes, I think episode two, maybe, um, where he's just like, listen, when we're done with all of this bullshit, Stephen, I will leave and you can have the body, you know, like, because he, he wants to live as Stephen. He doesn't want to live as Mark. He doesn't want to deal with, with this. But I think that this was, sorry, that was a sidetrack. Um, but I think that it's really important to also note that Mark, you can see, God, I hope I say this right, gradually was grateful for Steve. I mean, I think he was always grateful for Steve. There's a reason that Stephen was created. He wanted this to live this happy life. But there's something about the fact that they really came together to into a place where they could both appreciate the other. Um, Stephen getting more context about what happened with Mark and what's going on there, but Mark also, you know, seeing the compassion that he does actually have in him. You know, I think Mark is, is going up, has, has gone a lot, you know, thinking that he's a bad guy, given his mom given that he's killed people, you know, we, we, we've gone, we, the, there was the, the dead people that he, he, he killed and, um, the dead people that he killed. It's <laughs> a great descriptor, um, but it, you know what I mean? I'm all sitting up in that, um, room and, you know, I think there was something very significant about Stephen saved his life. I mean, th maybe that sounds dramatic or like, you know, corny. I don't, I don't know, but St I believe wholeheartedly Stephen saved his life and gave him whatever little happiness he could. Um, you know, even like how Stephen acted with, with Layla. And I think a lot of Mark pushing Layla away, of course, has to do with Conchu. We've discussed that, but I also think he pushes her away because he's got this, he's got this guilt about knowing about her dad, of course, but also he's just got, he's, he, he believes at his core that Mark is a bad person and Layla is delightful, wonderful, and has accessories that are weapons. I mean, she's a catch. We love, we live, and he doesn't think that he deserves her. And there's this this interesting thing where Stephen and her are having this beautiful connection, too. You know? Um, and it's interesting that Mark gets kind of jealous of that, you know, he hits himself with Stephen, you know, when he kissed her. And, you know, there's this... Uh, I, I truly think that... <laughs> Mark believes that he's not deserving of any sort of love or compassion or kindness, right? And to see Stephen, one, say it's okay. Okay, I'm gonna get through this without crying. Saying it's okay, you were a kid. Not only that, but Stephen at the end fighting for Mark such a significant moment of Stephen completely fighting for Mark to be, for them to be okay, you know. And in some way that's Mark realizing that he can fight for himself. Mark shouldn't be disregarded, he shouldn't be He deserves to be fought for, you know, and it, it's such a significant moment. And then to see Stephen in this moment of defending, I don't, I don't necessarily want to say sacrifice himself because he didn't like leap off, but he, but he fought, you know, and, and got sacrificed, I guess I could say, um, 
to for Mark and to see Mark be so distraught because Stephen seems lost now. Stephen who helped him cope with trauma. Stephen who was such a, saved him, I mean, so many times. I mean, in some regards. I mean, not, I guess not saved him by punching, you know, or fighting. That's, you know, Mark's, Mark's got that. I mean, at the end he did, but you know what I mean? I mean, in general, in their life together. You know, Mark is typically the one who's, who's the punchy fighty one, you know. Um, but to see him lose that after everything, it, it was, it was really, it's really sad. It's really sad. Okay. Woo! That was... I'm not kidding, that was probably, that was one of my favorite things I've watched from Marvel in, oh, in a long time. Oh, I loved it so much and I'm just so emotional and I don't know how to, <laughs> how to handle it. So, I can't wait for the finale. I'm just gonna leave it with me crying here, okay guys? This is, this is how we're gonna leave this reaction. I'm just gonna be crying. Um, I'm very excited for the finale. Um, and yeah, sorry, I can't breathe. <laughs> uh, if you would like to support me on Patreon or subscribe, I would really appreciate it. But if not, I'm just happy that you're here. I need to stop crying. Okay, bye.